Hello friends, followers and channel members. Welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And this is a video that many of you have got in touch with me about over the last few weeks following sim update number five. And that is what exactly is my graphics settings. So a while back, I had a video on the channel which showed what my graphics settings were and many of you uh, copied them and got great results. And obviously you can then tweak them to your own individual hardware uh, setup um, but since sim update number five has been out things have changed and so we're going to go and have a look at what settings i'm currently using for all of my uh, live stream flights and videos and then i would love to hear from you guys uh, to see how you're getting on with either copying that setup or tweaking it to get results for uh, for your own flight sim experience now, everyone will have different ideas on what they want from their flight simulator, all dependent upon the different types of flying they're doing. As I visit major international airports, I want to have lots of detail when I get to the airport, particularly on handcrafted airports like this one. I want to see all the baggage carts. I'd like seeing the uh, the cars in the car parks and all the detail on the jetways and things like that. So we've done a lot of experimenting over the past few weeks in order to get that fine balance between the sort of level of detail that you can see here and the frame rates when we're flying. So as you can see there on the ground we've got great textures and when we're coming in for approach one of my favorite views is the wing view. I love seeing the level of detail that we've got uh, showing. We can see all the individual buildings, houses, nice little water textures as well if there's a, a river or stream nearby. Uh, so I didn't want to sacrifice that either. And in order to get that we need to have a good level of detail on, uh, on the terrain which I've managed to uh, achieve for my particular setup. The specs of my PC can be seen down below in the video description uh, and you'll see from there I'm only running a GTX 1660 which of course is not the most powerful graphics card uh, about and we have 32 gigabytes of, uh, of RAM. Bear in mind as well of course that everything you're seeing when I'm streaming is all being done via one PC so all the graphics that you're getting uh, everything is being held by the single PC. Now the fact that I've upgraded recently to 32 gigabytes of RAM uh, has helped of course but since sim update number five the use of the RAM has actually been reduced so that's going to be great news for those of you that may only have uh, 16 gig of RAM for uh, for example. So with the settings that I'm going to take you through in a moment, you can see we get a nice balance of great textures, even inside the flight deck, as you can see here. And then if we're flying high up, I want to be able to see all of that detail that Microsoft Flight Simulator has to offer. And as I spend most of my time above 30,000 feet, this, uh, this is crucial for me. Not so much, of course, if you're uh, flying low and slow. So let's have a look at the graphic settings that I'm currently using. We have render scaling set to 130. Bear in mind that I'm only running a 1080 resolution. And 130, as you can see, is given nice crisp views outside. And you can still see, just having a look uh, at the top here, great distance and lots and lots of detail being shown. And that really does help. And really, by setting it to 130, it doesn't appear to impact frame rates at all. If you are getting a frame rate hit, I do recommend lowering this as this can be a major factor in your uh, frame rate performance. V-Sync I've got turned off here however I do have that set on in my NVIDIA graphics settings but I leave it turned off here in, uh, in the simulator. The global rendering quality then of course there are the presets mine is set to custom and you shall see why in a moment. Start with high and then I tend to tweak things as I've gone along. So the best settings that I've got is anti-aliasing obviously set to TAA. The terrain level of detail well that is showing at 200 however I'm going to go into a bit more detail about this a little later on in the video so stay tuned for that. We've then obviously got all the settings that you're very well well aware of by now and I'm just going to leave these shown on screen for a few uh, moments so that you can see those pause the video uh, emulate replicate these in your simulator 
if you wish. Obviously, the kind of flying I do is usually jetliner flying, so the trees and bushes I've only got set to medium. I'll be honest with you, the difference between medium and high and even ultra isn't that big a deal and I'm sure you'll agree you can see in the background what we've got showing now um, medium is plenty and I'd much rather have a smooth performance and the quality of detail you can see here in the simulator so medium is absolutely fine for me I do have building set on higher though because that does tend to add a little bit more to the airports that we get there they look a little bit more realistic uh, but again the difference between high and ultra not enough for me to sacrifice a few uh, frame rates for uh, for that the object's level of detail then, this seems pretty random, doesn't it? But I'm going to go again into a bit more detail with this and this later on in the video. So stay tuned for that. Volumetric clouds then, always at ultra because the clouds look phenomenal in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, there's already a discussion that we've all had several times about how the clouds have looked following sim update number five. But I always had mine at Ultra prior to that update anyway, and I'm not going to change it now. And again, then everything else is pretty uh, self-explanatory. We've got the texture resolution, anthropic filtering, and the super sampling texture synthesis. And again, I'm just going to leave these on the uh, on the screen for you, so you can match these up exactly if you wish. Of course, everything is personal preference. These are the settings that I've just spent lots of time working towards um, to give me the best visuals and frames per second that work for me. If you want better graphics and don't mind losing a few frames, then by all means go ahead and tweak them. But I get so many people asking me um, on the on the Discord server, in the live chats, on the streams, what are my graphics settings? So the basis of this video is so that you can, uh, so that you can see them all. I'd love to hear what you guys have got yours set to or if you have based your settings up on these and then gone in and tweaked them and found even more improvements which <laughs> then I may copy. Uh, I'd love to hear how you guys have, uh, have got on with that. Okay, so very important now. I've got all of these set. I don't, these are obviously all saved. Once these are saved, I'm going to show you the next thing that I have done in order to get the simulator looking as clean and crisp as it is at the moment. So obviously I've not changed anything, so I'm just going to go back and uh, we can resume and we can see everything looking nice there. But what about the terrain level of detail when we get higher up? This high level of detail that we were used to prior to sim update number five seemed to disappear following that update and we noticed it in a few live streams that we did, not just myself but everybody watching. So we had to find a way to go in and correct that. When we were down low to the ground everything was fine but flying up at uh, above 30,000 feet we lost the crispness and sharpness of, uh, of all the textures. This is where we've got a little bit more advanced and gone to tweak some of the config settings outside of the simulator. So what about those two slider scale settings I referred to uh, earlier? The terrain le level of detail and the objects level of detail. Well, I actually make a couple more tweaks outside of the simulator graphic settings to be able to get the graphics that you're seeing uh, in my live streams and videos. In order to do that, you'll need to find the user config settings for your simulator. And that's pretty easy to uh, locate. If if you know where your community folder is located, just skip back a couple of folders from packages to the local cache and it's just here, the user config. Uh, we're going to go in and open this with uh, something like Notepad. You can set the computer to uh, open OPT files with Notepad. I haven't done that as of yet, uh, so I can just go in and change the extension there to a text file. Make sure before you do this, of course, that you have got the original user config file backed up somewhere just in the event that something does go wrong but I'm happy to open that um, and here it is so now if I come down the two slider scales that you see in the graphics setting is the terrain and the objects level of detail now the objects level of detail you'll see is 1.45 and you'll remember from earlier on in the video that was set to 145 that's absolutely fine but the terrain level of detail I have set 
to 3.0 here, which actually equates to 300. Obviously, the slider scale, as you know, only goes up to 200. But you can go in and the simulator will read this as a load factor of 3. And that can make a big difference to the sort of draw distance that you're getting when flying around so you don't get things like buildings popping in far off in the distance you're going to gradually see those coming closer and closer and when you're flying high up as well i find that to be really useful um, and you get a uh, nice uh, a nice balance there you can increase this as well i've seen some people have this set to 5.0 uh, or 500 well my, i think my pc would ground to a halt if i did that and it is all about balance finding that perfect uh, golden nugget number between good frame rates and good level of detail for your terrain three works perfectly for me but I would love to know in the comments down below what uh, what works for you. So here are the two uh, figures that I use for those two currently. The only other thing that I've changed is if I come down a little bit further to the post process, uh, and that is this one just here, film grain. I have turned this off. Um, you can read about this on the internet what film grain does, but I just think you get much clearer images uh, if that is uh, if that is turned off. So that's just the only other thing I've tweaked in the user comment folder to uh, to get what I consider to be great graphics and as I keep saying this is all uh, in the eye of the beholder it's all what you personally think works best for you uh, there are a few other things I've seen people do they've turned off eye adaptation color grading and the sharpening as well I've left these turned on my personal preference uh, but again let me know down in the comments what you guys um, what you guys think to that once we've done this of course make sure that you save your settings close that and obviously I'm gonna have to rename that back to the OPT and now that can be read properly again by the simulator Okay, now we've saved and closed that, we can fire up the simulator again and you will hopefully have some good place to start with before tweaking your own graphic settings for your own individual uh, computer setup. One of the things I must say is if you now go back into your graphic settings and tweak them, you will change the settings that we have just made in the user config file. So it's worth making sure that after you've changed any settings in your simulator you go back and check the user config file to make sure that whatever level of detail settings and perhaps the uh, after processing such as film grade settings um, are still as you want them to be or go in and uh, pop them back as uh, as you wish hope you found that video useful guys Please do let me know in the comments how you've got on with some of those changes and what you have found to work in particular for you and what your hardware setup is as well. Remember, this is all based upon what you prefer to see when you are flying. It's just what I prefer to see there in this video. I'd love to know what uh, what you guys think of, uh, of that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please do hit the subscribe button and uh, turn on the notifications bell for more information and videos to come. And and also for future live streams as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye bye for now.